first thing I want to get to, bro, and kind of get your thoughts on is just the off season that we've had. It's one of the more eventful off seasons we've had here in the last five to 10 years with just so much turnover in the front office and downstairs. So just kind of your thoughts on the off season and how you think the Pistons did this off season as far as what they needed to work on and approve and being able to execute. B plus, simply because you went and got the leader of the team. That was the first and foremost, most important thing yeah. that you could have done. Um, you know, no matter what players you have here, what young players, what talents you have as the young guys, Cade, Ivy, and Durant, if they don't have the right coach, man, it's just not going to work out. It's just not going to work out. So leadership was the theme by going to get a head coach and also going to get veteran players, mm -hmm. um, actual, you know, players that's going to help, you know, what we have already in our core. I mean, that was big time. Yeah. I was kind of going to lean A minus, but I'm going to go B plus. I think one of the more, and maybe it's not understated because of the money that is, that was given, but it, as far as being talked about, I kind of feel like I understated. The Tobias Harris signing. I think that's going to be very important for this team off the court. You already see Cade and Tobias. You know, Cade is kind of picking his brain and just talking to him and being around him. In the sense, I think it's going to help Cade be more comfortable just being here. Because Tobias was here before. He knows what it's like to be here as one of the guys. So I think he can kind of help Cade get that familiarity with the city. In the sense that maybe he wouldn't have been able to as a player. His maturity, the way he approaches the game. He usually plays 70 plus games a season. He's always serious about his craft in the offseason. He's always getting his work in. Just a consummate professional, man. And so I think he's going to rub off on our young guys in a positive way when it comes to that. So I haven't really heard a lot of people talking about that. But I think that's something that's really going to be important. Especially considering he's still a good player in this league. He's not just going to be a locker room guy. He's going to be a leader on the court too. So I'm looking forward to seeing that growth process take form as a result of him just kind of being around. Big time move to bring him here. It's still going to be all about Cade, right? Oh, Obviously, yeah. this is another year. I expect to see a better version of Cade. I know he's been working his ass off. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been seeing a little bit of respect starting to come about with K. There's a lot of predictions of him even making an all-star game this year, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting because, like I said, they was just leaving him out of everything. But to see some some respect finally, man, is, is definitely a relief as a Pistons fan, man, because we know what we got here. We know the talent we got here. We know what he can become. We know what Ivy and Durant can become. And you know, speaking of Durant, and it's not nothing messy. We're not going to talk about Angel Reese and Durant and all of that crap. That ain't our business. That's all rumors. I don't know. I don't know. Right. I got Durant making a huge jump this season. I do, man. I've you been, me I've been watching him. Yeah, I've been silently watching Durant, man. Yeah. He's been putting in some work. He's yeah. been putting in a lot of work. I mean, he was already built like a all-world athlete. Yeah. yeah, but still, he just, he just looks even a, a, a step better body-wise. Mm -hmm. And I expect them to have a big season, man. I really do. Yeah. A big improvement. Like I said, those three guys, man, that you see at the bottom right hand uh, corner of the screen. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to take a major jump this season with the pieces that we added in the coaching staff. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, Jalen Duran, bro. I feel like he and Jaden Ivey, probably Duran to a lesser extent, at least in the eyes of the fans, kind of regressed. I feel like both of their rookie years, they came out hot. You know, and they were given more opportunity because obviously, you know, K was out for a lot of that season. I feel like a lot of people expected the jump that we're expecting for them to have this year, expected that last year. And I think because of the coaching change and all the other things that happened just last year as a whole, it just didn't happen. So I think Duran and Jaden are kind of been overlooked as far as potential and expectation. I mentioned it before, I think a big part of it for him was just it's not it's not the IQ, it's not the intense, it's just the motivation. This is the motivation of just, you know what, I'm locked in. Let's get it. I think now the reinvigoration that we have and with it being a clean slate is going to go a long way for all of these young guys next season. I think Jalen Duran is going to have by far his best season. I got an interesting comment. Interesting what you just said. And here's the difference between the two. The difference in between the two, Drummond was put in a different situation than Duran. Duran is not advertised as the number one guy on the team, not even the number two guy on the team. He has time to actually grow into his role and take his time to get better at certain things. Drummond didn't really have that. Drummond was brought here to be the next guy. And the pieces that they put around him didn't really help until we got guys like Brandon Jennings a little bit later. Right. When you look at the coaching staff and, and how he's developed young guys in this league already, 
I think Durant, Durant is definitely in a better situation than Drummond was. Way better situation. He wasn't supposed to even be the fourth option. He should have been the fifth option. Yeah. We got him out there trying to shoot threes and all this crazy stuff. You know, they was trying to have him do, man. Our franchise yep. failed him. I think we're in a better a better situation right now. I hate to do this, but you put Durant in that situation that Drummond was in with no direction at all. It's, it's going to be tough for him, too. He's probably still going to get numbers. But his development probably wouldn't be there the way it, it has an opportunity to be there now. The roadway that we have given these guys and the time frame that we've given these guys to be able to grow. No rush. You're right, man. Like, I think back to, to Stan Van Gundy when he was, you know, getting on Andre and he was trying to turn him into Dwight Howard and this, this post-up game and all these different things he wanted him to learn. And it, it, just, it just didn't look right. He was able to kind of do it, but it didn't look natural to him. And that's not his fault. He was just put in a bad position. And he did because he didn't have the proper infrastructure here to really show him how to really be who he needed to be as a basketball player. Yeah, it ain't even just drumming. With our, our franchise, especially in the past, we have this disease, man, of trying to make our players play roles that they should. We right. had Reggie Jackson trying to make him the man. And you see on every other team that he's been a role guy, a guy off the bench, he's been way more successful. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just our problem. We, you know, we always try to make a player do something more than what they should be doing. Right. Josh Smith. Think about yeah, Josh signing Smith. all that money. Chucking up shots every dog on where, man. Mm -hmm. and getting, I don't want to see the Pistons go back to those days. Right. Durant has his role. Cade is the guy. Ivy is, is the guy next to Cade. Mm -hmm. We have our veterans. There's no reason for Durant to be out here doing anything extra but what he needs to do. And I think that's what he's going to do. And having, you know, facilitators who have the ability to get to the rim and the ability to be able to find the right guy like Cade and Jaden, it's going to put the defense in a situation when they're defending us that you can have Jalen Duran not have any plays drawn up for him and he still averaged a double-double. Right. Just off of putbacks, from penetration, off misses, from pick and roll action. And okay, they, you double here. Okay, you got Tobias. Swing, swing, swing. Now you got a Jalen Duran under the basket. For a, you know what I mean? There's so many different opportunities going to be there for him just based on the guys that we have around him. That's why I'm so glad to see that we have guys who are now starting to fit each other. Yeah. That pick and roll offense is going to make sense now. We're not just going to do it just to do it. Right. We're gonna, the defense is going to have to make decisions now. Listen, this is why you haven't seen the, the uh, season prediction videos or win or loss videos. None of that right now to me is relevant. With the Pistons right now, focus on putting some wins together. You know, the 35 or the 40 wins, we'll talk about that later. And you know, when it came to the schedule release, I seen all type of schedule release videos. Kudos to everyone who did one. I'm not concerned about the schedule, bro. Whoever you play, there's no easy teams for the Pistons right now because we did a lot of losing. Right. Whoever you play, you got to go out there and try to beat. I don't care who it is on the schedule. You know, I, the schedules look easy or hard. It, not for this team. Not for this team yeah. because the teams that we were supposed to beat last year, we didn't. Yep. <laughs> we didn't. So, good point. Right now, stream together some wins. Let's worry about that first before we start talking schedule and. Yeah, that stuff will work itself out. Like, I'm kind of with you, bro. I know you were saying just stringing things together, right? For me, it's incremental growth over the course of the season. You know what I mean? Between October and December, I want to see our team gelling, getting better, understanding each other, playing with intention, not looking around, trying to figure out what we're doing. The ball's not moving. You know what I mean? No. I want to see this team show that incremental growth to where it's like you don't have these relapse games. Where you, great, great game, good game, relapse game, blowout. Great game, great game. No, I want to see a consistent effort every single night, win or lose. That's what I'm looking forward to. When I watch my team play, I want to be able to expect and see the team that I've been watching over previous days and weeks. So I think just the incremental growth, because that alone, you'll continue to get better and you'll start to surpass teams on the way and you'll get those wins. I don't really care about the numbers. That'll work itself out. Just focus on the incremental growth of getting better day by day week by week month by month and those wins will start those win streaks so it's, we'll turn into three and four and five as a result of that absolutely man man that season was tough it was tough bro <laughs> it was tough to watch man man so, you, you know, know what's messed up i hate to, to i hate to say this but it's the truth it got to a point where i would go in expecting us to lose mm -hmm. and i i hate to even say that out loud because of how much pride i have for my team 
right? They could be playing Golden State. I'm still like, we about to get this dub. It's, it's about to be one today, nine losses. But last season, they were just like, man, I was hopeful we could win, but I was expecting so a lot of time for us to not win. So I'm just glad it's behind us and we can all move on, clean slate, and look forward to some good basketball. We've talked a lot about this particular signing <laughs> this offseason for Benson and how he really could affect in a positive way a lot of our young guys as far as our shooting ability. A lot of our guys in our team, especially our wings, aren't great shooters, aren't good shooters. We know he was brought here to help with that. So is there a particular guy or guys that stand out to you that you think will benefit the most from having him here as our shooting coach i'm gonna go with jay Ivey, man i think okay. you know he probably tweaks that jumping for him a little bit you know and try to help him get that that shot off a little bit quicker you know a little bit more rise on that shot as well like i said everybody's mm -hmm. gonna benefit from him obviously but if i have to pick one guy it's probably gonna be ivy i think ivy is a better shooter than he's he's shown so far I think he's going to improve. I think who's going to have a bigger improvement, though, is Asar. Because even when I, when I look at Asar's form, it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look bad. He's one of those guys. Some guys, you look at him shoot, and you're like, he's only going to improve so much. Yeah. Regardless of what he... I don't. I think Asar has a lot of room to improve. Because what did he shoot last season? 19% from three? Yeah. So, I mean, he has the most room to improve. You know, I don't really yeah. see him going backwards from here. And, yeah. you know, having a season now under his belt being able to play now with more guys who can shoot the ball like we talked about previously i think all those things now i don't think he's going to have a high volume because i think a lot of his points are going to come in transition right um off of his own defense but i think when he does have those and then have court offense i think he's going to knock him down probably going to be the corner that seems to be his spot so yeah i think he's going to take maybe two or three games i could see him getting to 30 percent in, in yeah. one season i could see it i wanted to go with sorry man but for me, it was just usage, maybe three a game. In the immediate, I'd probably go with somebody like Ivy. Uh, Ron got a lot to do, a lot of work to do himself. Yeah. You know, so like I said, I always, him and Asar, to me, I hold them in the same category in a lot of similar situations. So Right. Yeah. I will say, too, I kind of want to temper expectations, too. I know I just said 30% for Asar, but I really do see that for him. I think that was kind of a blip, that 19 last season. I think he's much better than that, but we'll see. But I want to caution myself in part two that this is not something that we should expect to just happen overnight or even over one season. We can't expect all of our guys to just start shooting 4% after one season because we've got Fred Vincent here. You know, it's going to take time. Even with the guys that we have seen him in different uh, teams improve, you know, the Lonzo Balls, for example, who he dramatically helped improve his jump shot, his form was the worst I had seen since Michael Kidd Gilchrist, something crazy. <laughs> so even guys like him, he became, you know, hopefully he returns to the league, but he became one of the better three-point shooters in the league. But it took two or three years to get to that point. So just, I want to kind of make sure that that's the expectation here, especially for our young guys. It's going to take time. I'm looking, you know, for it to be, once again, incremental growth, season over season, you know, four or 5% here, four or 5% there, season over season. Hopefully that would, that's, that would be what I would kind of expect. I had a bone to pick with 2K, bro. Okay. First of all, the ratings. Okay. A little, okay. A little disrespectful. To me. I agree. Um, they had Jaden at 78, bro. Like, come on, dog. Really? You know That's what I'm crazy. saying? They had a bad season, but well, obviously, you know, Ronnie and them, they don't know nothing about basketball anyway, because they game is <laughs> broke. Yeah. I, you know, at this point, I can't even be mad, to be honest. I can't even be mad, bro. If it were me and I had no ties whatsoever to the Charlotte Hornets and they were the worst team in the league, I just naturally just wouldn't and be invested. One, because they're not good, and two, because they're not a moneymaker. It just wouldn't make sense. So, like, I get it. I'm not even really mad no more about it, to be honest with you. Like, we lost 27 straight. That's on us. That's on us. As bad as it was, it's on us. We got to dig ourselves out of that hole. You know, yeah. ain't nobody going to do it for us. Since you're talking about 2K ratings, how many guys will we have in the 80s by the end of the season? Because right now, it's Cade and JD. I believe that's it. Tobias, Tobias. might be an 80. Tobias. Is he an 80? Okay. So that's three. How many will we have by the end of the season? Chat, how this many is, will we have by the end of the season? Is, Hey, probably about maybe four. This is 2K, man. I would say four. The only other guy I think who would play well enough to get for them to get that to him would be Jaden. I think he's already at 80, at least. To have him at a 78, bro, like, come on, man. That's, that's rookie ranking, man. That's, that's Yeah. I think he'll be around at 85. I really do. 84, 85 by the end of the season. Who else we got? Asar. Hmm. You think Asar? So I don't, I think the only way Asar gets there is if he builds off of last season and he dramatically improves at three. You don't see a lot of guys in the 80 plus who are terrible three-point shooters as a wing. You don't see that. 
Big guys, yeah, but not not wings and guards. You know what though? I can see it. I can see him getting close. Cause I myself said that I think he's gonna get to 30%. <laughs> so I could legit see it. I'm not sure about Fontecchio. I don't know if he's gonna have enough, if he's gonna get enough minutes to garner that high of a rating. Cause if you are an 80 plus player, you should be playing, right? So I don't know if he's gonna get the minutes. It's gonna come down to one of I think one of these two guys, Ryan, could get there. I really think Ivy and Duran are going to blossom this year and Kate takes a big step. How fast we can gel as a team is my question. I think that's going to be our big three this season. I think we're looking at it right here. And like you said, it's just going to take time. We say it all the time, right? Jaden and Kate played a total of 68 games out of a total, what is it, 164. They haven't had a lot of opportunity to play together. By the end of the season, we're not saying, man, we don't know what we have yet. We don't know what we got. We got to see more. No, I just want to see them just get the reps in that's what it comes down to it at this point now i think k's ceiling is a mix of luca and halliburton but he can actually guard someone especially with jb bickerstaff just saying this offseason that one thing he wanted to do was help turn kate into a two-way player that means he expects kate to be a good two-way player for him to say that out loud that's another reason that king you always talk about it he's not going to average 30. we're not going to put it in a position to have to average 30 so that he can be a two-way player because right. that energy has to go somewhere that's why great defensive players are seldom great offensive players. You don't see it too often. Because not only does it take the ability, but you got to be in great shape. I think he can get there for sure. Definitely think he's going to be a high assist guy this season. This guy, you got guys that can pass to now that can get a bucket. Tobias Harris, he can. that's one thing he can do. He can get a bucket. When it comes to K, average points this season, I'm thinking somewhere around 24 to 25 points a game. Yeah, I was going to say about 24, 25 too. Yep. Yeah. But I can see... Right, right. I'm looking for double digit assists yeah. for him this year. That's that's I've been saying it since the, since the beginning of the offseason. Once we got these guys here, I think he's gonna get ten plus. I really do. I think we're gonna see just how good of a passer he is when he has the right tools around him. King, who are you most excited to watch this upcoming season? Is there a particular guy you have your eye on? It's Duran for me. I know what Ivy can be. I know what he is obviously know what Cade is right i still think duran has some steps to take forward um some improvement to make he's shown and flashed in games what he can do against you know some high grade opponent opponents man mm -hmm. remember that game against uh sabonis felt easy for him i expect him to take some steps forward this season mm -hmm. i think victor staff is going to do a great job with duran like he did with those bigs over there in cleveland i think he's going to get to that next step and improving and becoming the you know that all-star caliber type of big man man seeing the growth of king and deuce on this channel is amazing seeing deuce on the news king getting better and better on her networking y'all the detroit version of nike hey bro you know what man? I, I appreciate you saying that bro like that that means a lot chris you, you saying that man just 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 the part you know about the growth because that's all we really try to keep doing we just try to keep getting better and better. Like we love doing this. We gonna be doing this anyway. So why not do it together? And so like we just appreciate y'all support, man, that y'all really have shown us. As much of a hoop head as I and a Pistons fan as I am, I know it's not much more than anybody else that's here. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that, Chris. And we're gonna continue to try to keep try to keep growing, man. I've already claimed the Ocho Cinco uh character <laughs> when it comes to nightcap. I I'll be Ocho Cinco, especially when it comes to football, because King is that dude when it comes to football. But I'll be that guy, you know, King is the more more serious one you know he kind of I'll, built I'll, more like shannon i'll take the hennessy and the cigar thing. <laughs> king look like <laughs> it's on site it's on site marvin it's on site just be ready man when you see a silverback gorilla come out of nowhere just know oh my god bro ron holland will he get meaningful playing time this season garbage time was he gonna be in the g league not this season not this season. Simply because Not this of who season. Brought here and who he got in front of him. Not this season. Okay. Probably some stints in the G League, some some growth moments, some garbage time. He could play himself into it, but no, starting out, absolutely not. Got too much yeah. in front of him. And this is no shade to him. I think he's extremely raw, but can be really, really good. This is no shade to him. I think if he's playing meaningful minutes, we're not that good. How many rookies coming in are playing meaningful minutes on playoff teams? Right. It just doesn't happen too often. I think our team is significantly better. And like you said, I think the guys ahead of him right now are more ready to come in and contribute. I think Asar is more ready. I think Fontecchio is more ready. You know, a lot of it just because they played in the NBA already. They've already had that experience of being a rookie. It's not as much as to do with talent as it has to do with more so I think experience because we got a young team. I think he's going to spend some time in the G League just so he can keep playing basketball more so than anything. But I think 
more so next season, you'll start to see him kind of force his way into the lineup. Because I think he'll make an improvement the following season. Yeah, I totally agree, man. Preseason or not, it's just not going to be enough to, to surpass some of these. These guys, we've seen it on the court already with them in regular season situations. Yep. It's just not going to be enough. He's going to have to do some stints in the G League, man, and work himself, uh, you know, up that ladder. That's just what it is. Yeah. So, I yeah. think I think the only way he could do it, like, where it made sense is if he, if he just was a dog in practice. Yeah. Where he was just out significantly outplaying guys in practice. Mm -hmm. You know, I, th I think that would be the only way. Because that's really kind of how you earn your time a little bit is in practice, man. And then in the game, you can build on that, right? But the opportunity of getting it, a lot of it sometimes are earned in practice, those roles. That's why you see guys going at each other so hard in practice. I think that'd be the only, I'm not saying he will, but I think that's the only way he could force his way into some playing time. He had to, he had to be a dog in practice. Let's talk about this guy. Let's talk about this guy. Can you want to talk about him specifically? I think there's a lot of people that's as high on Clintman as I am, you know, already getting mentioned in the NBA fashion magazines and everything. Clintman to me has all the tools to turn into a, a, a true diamond in the rough for the Pistons, man. I am yeah. very high on Clintman. If anybody that, you know, can improve their jumper with our new shooting coach, I think it's him. The form is is right. And when he shoots the ball, even when he misses, it just feel like it should have went in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. it looks good. For mm -hmm. a young guy like that, man, um, at that height, guy that's gonna run the floor, he's gonna try, he's gonna try on defense. He's mm -hmm. not a big guy, he can't really do much, but he's gonna try. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But just full of energy and a great passer. Great passer. You can find yourself on the basketball court very fast at that position that he plays, being that type of guy. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm really high on Clinton. He plays very poised basketball. You know, you always hear about rookies. It takes a year or two for them for the game to slow down. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it already slowed down for him already. He's played overseas professionally. It was it was funny for me to see him make that no look pass that we always talk about, <laughs> that Matthew Stafford pass that he made, because it tells me he's made that pass hundreds of times. Right. You mentioned the passing. He just seems to understand where everybody's at in the basketball court. He's one of those guys where he sees the court. He knows where everybody's at. It was just fun to watch. So I think he, I think his IQ and just his poise alone is gonna go a long way for him being able to surpass a lot of and surprise a lot of these guys, I think, as far as who is actually playing this season. I think he can push his way. I think he's one of those guys, like you mentioned, who are ahead of the other guys we mentioned who can push his way just because he doesn't hurt you in a basketball court. He's making the right basketball play. He's a real and point he, forward. He's a point forward. I'm with you, bro. I'm all in on Clinton, man. I, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people this season. I think his his basketball smarts is really what's going to help him kind of shine through, at least early on with this team. You know, I'm looking forward to the days if he turns out to be what we think he can potentially be. Mm -hmm. You know, where we can see him playing next to Duran, man, and out there with the rest of the court. Because, yes. Like I said, his ability to stretch the floor and pass along with what you already got in, in K. I was going to ask you, okay, so in that situation where he starts alongside Duran, say a year or two from now, who do you have in the rest of that starting five? A couple of years from now, like I said, obviously, we probably end up moving on from Tobias. Who will play the three would be the only question for me. The other four is obvious at this point. Who will we have available to play the three? Will Fontecchio make enough in, right. you know, to step into that role? Or do we go and bring somebody in here would be my question. But those four, K, Ivy, Jaden, Clintman, yeah. you know, something that something that I can see that could happen. That's only right. based on his development and how much he jumps mm -hmm. as a player. But Clintman, mm -hmm. as he he had he has the tools, man. He, he does has the tools. He does. I think at that three, there's th the three guys that we have, or a big fish. Like I saw somebody just mention. You got Ron Holland. Yeah. You got Fontecchio. And you got Asar. That's a great three to choose from. So a year or two from now, seeing where those guys are, that's if we don't make a big move, right? As far as your starting five, do you have, have you kind of changed how you feel about that? Do you kind of feel the same since we brought in more guys? Has anything changed your mind? It's just the middle of that lineup, man. I can't put a finger on it. From what you brung in that shooting guard and what you have here already in Ivy. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at the, the three spot, who's going to play the three? Until we get into training camp and start getting some training camp stories, mm -hmm. until we see preseason action, it's just hard to put a finger on it because you don't know who's going to be the guys at those positions. Point yeah. guard, obvious, obvious. Center, obvious. Even the four is different. 
<laughs> even yeah before, is this tobias yeah. gonna start at the four or is this gonna be flat out is it Isaiah? gonna be still yeah all right mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's tough man it's tough yeah. because you got uh, this cluster of guys it's hard to predict that's why i'm looking forward to the season bro other than the, you know, the growth that we're looking for it's just gonna be fun watching all these guys figure each other out. Well, you know how it is when you when you add a new guy to a team and it's like, oh, that's different. Whether it's the way they're shooting the ball that you're not used to seeing, whether it's the way they're getting up off the floor. You know, the newer guys, they're more fun to watch because you haven't seen it in this jersey yet. You know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to kind of seeing Malik Beasley knocking down threes as a knockdown shooter, something we didn't have at all last season, you know, from three. So just looking forward to seeing these guys and kind of what they bring. I agree with you, man, that starting five is tough. When Tobias was here, he did play a mixture of the three and the four. Him and Marcus Morris, de depending on their matchups, you know, would kind of bounce back and forth. They wouldn't always guard the three or they wouldn't always guard the four. They'd be interchangeable. So it's even hard to know with Tobias. I know he played the four when he was with the Sixers and with the Clippers. Brown Hollis should be the Darvin Hammer with the Pistons. You know, he would come in here and there in the pinch, foul trouble, lock up on D, post for somebody. Yeah, I think that's good for him. That's the kind of role a rookie like him should be in for a contending team or a playoff team. That's right where he should be. That's where any rookie should be. One more. I think Hollis should work his way to 20 plus minutes and him plus Asar could be a great defensive. D yeah. I said that earlier, DG. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not mad at you saying you want them to him to run with, with the starters because I, I, I get it. I think him and Asar together, bro, like if they can both become respectable shooters, oh my God, the two of them, insane. That would be fun to watch. When you think about all of our young guys, they got ability defensively. Yes, they do. So I think, you know, Bickerstaff is definitely going to preach some defense to these young guys. We're going to see them on the defensive end this year, uh, unlike we did when we seen them with Monty Williams. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they all got that potential, man. I mean, Kay's got a seven-foot wingspan. He's six, 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 seven. He's strong. Jaden, he's got the the measurable he's got the build to be a great defender man you know what right. i mean so i think jb's gonna raise all of their floors as far as right. defense for sure it's, it's coming soon the patience will pay off soon we can get back to some pistons basketball and really enjoy what we hope to be an improved season i'm on my way up and i'm not gonna stop we headed straight to the top in the low i got a face i got no time to waste it waste it it's my time